Okay, y'all. I got a good one for y'all. I got a good one for y'all. It's getting real with Ashley Dawn, a place that always gets real, and it's always with me because it's my channel. What up? I have been going through some stuff, and I love when I go through some stuff because God teaches me lessons. I'm getting ready to speak in Atlanta this weekend at a women's conference, Women of Life. Shout out. Woo woo. Uh, and I'll be talking about distraction there. But, uh, and I'll upload it on here too for those of you who won't be in Atlanta. But, the enemy is a lie. He sure is. He comes and he tries to parade himself as a truth, but he is nothing but a little lie. So, I want to talk to y'all today. I want to get real with you today about a little lie that an enemy, the enemy, enemy that we really have. People are not our enemy. Satan is our enemy. Satan pollutes souls and pollutes hearts and pollutes minds and pollutes friendships and relationships and, and that's our enemy. That's our main target. But one of the lies is that people hate you, right? People don't like you. Maybe it's a co-worker. Maybe it's a guy you're dating. Maybe insert person here that you think doesn't like you. Wait a second that you think doesn't like you, that you think has an issue with you. That's the lie. It's not that they don't like you. It's that they don't like themselves, okay? That coworker that's always commenting about things about you, it's not that she doesn't like you. She probably wants to be you. She's commenting because she is miserable with herself. Maybe she doesn't like the way she looks. She doesn't like, maybe she doesn't have as many friends as you. Maybe she doesn't have, you know, insert thing that you have here. It's not that she doesn't like you. It's that she doesn't like herself. When you're confident and you walk into a room of insecure people, it's not that they don't like you. It's that they don't like the confidence in you because they don't have it in themselves. I've dated several guys, not at the same time, but at different times in my life, and they, for the most part, some of them, not all of them, because I like a secure man, but a lot of them have been insecure, and we've dated for a while, and I'm like, why are, why are you so insecure? Like, you're an awesome guy. Obviously, I'm dating you, so you're awesome. Like, I wouldn't date somebody who wasn't, but like, why are you so insecure? Why do you have such a bad body image or self-image, or why are you so mean to yourself? Why do you put yourself down? insecurity. I did a video a couple uh, weeks ago, maybe it was last week, about insecurity and how insecurity is the root of all problems. People that are insecure about money, people that are insecure about vanity, people that are insecure about material possessions, right? Maybe they don't own a house. I don't own a house. I have an older vehicle, but it's very easy, right, for us to look at other people and want what they have. And I'm a big, you know, speaker of this. Don't want what somebody else has if you don't want to do what it took them to get what they have that you want, right? It's easy to want somebody's life. It's easy to want a family. You're not the one putting in the work. It's easy to want to own your own house. You're not the one paying for it. It's easy to want to own a business. You're not the one staying up all night, right? My boss is a business owner, him and his wife. And they sacrifice a lot for the company. And everyone thinks, oh, I want to be a business owner. Really? Because I watched my boss and his wife walk through some really difficult decisions and sacrifices that a lot of people wouldn't make. And they do it for the business and they do it for the people that they are supporting and employing, right? Employing local is a big deal. We look at a business owner and think, wow, they're a business owner. They have this, they have that. We don't know what it took them to get that. My boss has been in the business for 10 years. It has taken 10 years of his life to get where he is right now. And even more so before that, there are so many things that he learned and his wife learned in college that they're, you know, bringing into the business. And everybody looks at that and they're like, oh, you know, he's a business owner. Yeah, him and his wife sacrificed a lot to get to where they are. They have an awesome family. They sacrificed a lot to get to where they are. It's so easy for us to look at other people and want what they have, but it's hard for us to try to walk in their shoes. It is. And 
so often insecurity makes us hate people that have what we have or what we want to have one day. It makes us hate them because we're jealous, because we're insecure, because we want what they have, but we don't want to do what they had to do to get it. I know I'm stepping on some toes right now, and maybe you're watching this and you're like, I've, I've been a little hateful towards my coworkers. I've been a, a little hateful towards my boss. I've been a little hateful towards my wife or my husband or my friend, or I've been hateful toward insert this person here because you've wanted what they had. You've been insecure, you've been jealous. Maybe you need to apologize to them. Maybe you need to go to counseling. Maybe you need to deal with the issues that are happening inside of you before they attack the people around you. I lead a uh, women's Bible study on Monday nights. It's amazing. I love my girls. Shout out to my Bible study girls. And we're going through Forgiving What You Can't Forget. It's a Lisa Turquist book. And last night was talking about healthy boundaries and how when there, it, it was called Dancing with Dysfunction. And when there are people in your life that are jealous of you, that are insecure, this wasn't in the book, I'm adding this, but when there are people that are insecure with their own self, you being in their environment is going to be a dysfunctional relationship. And I say that because, with authority, because I know what I'm talking about, but I say that because I've been around it. If you are not a healthy you, you're going to harm the people around you, whether with the way you think, the way you talk, the way you act, which is kind of the same thing, but the things that you do and the things that you say are going to affect the people around you. And if you're not healthy, it's going to affect them in a negative way. If you don't have a healthy self image, if you are not secure, A, in Christ, you're not, you don't have God confidence, confidence that comes from God, not yourself. You are going to pick people apart and you are going to walk into a room and feel less than and feel inferior and think everyone's prettier than you, everyone's more talented than you, everybody has more money than you. It's funny, I was talking to this girl a couple weeks ago and we were just talking about, I'm a words of affirmation person. I love, I love encouraging people. Hello, if you're on my channel, you know that. I love writing encouragement. I handwrite letters to almost every waitress I've ever had. I handwrite letters to almost every person I've ever had an interaction with because I want to thank them for the blessing they are in my life. Well, this girl was saying, well, I don't need all that. I'm secure in myself. I don't need all that. And as she was saying it, it literally like made me chuckle a little bit because I'm like, girlfriend, you wear insecurity like a crown on your head. Everyone around you can see that you're insecure. That's a you issue. You got to go to counseling. You got to get help for that. I can't, I can't be your savior. I can't help you. I can't be the counseling for you. You got to do that on yourself. You got to do that on your own. I cannot do that for you. I can't. I love you. I'll pray for you. I'll encourage you. I'll be here for you. But I, I can't work out your insecurity for you. The sun is shining and I have a visor that is semi-ish protecting me from, from the glare at least. Sometimes you are sunshine in other people's life and they want to block you. Why? Because you're shining in their eyes. Listen, my mom calls me sunshine. That's her nickname for me. My daddy calls me sunflower and ash. But sometimes I am sunshine. All the time I am sunshine. But I shine in people's eyes. And some people can't handle it. And so they try to block it. But the thing is, you can't block anything from God. So when they try to block it, guess what? It just pushes it out that much further. It just pushes that sunshine out much, that much further. If you are somebody that is shining and people are blocking you or people are being unkind to you and you think, well, they hate me. They don't like me. It's not that they don't like you. It honestly is the opposite. They like you. They don't like themselves. So many of bullies and people that put other people down, especially online, little keyboard warriors, they are keyboard warriors because they are looking at something that you or somebody else has and they want it. And instead of doing the work to get the thing that they want, they just rip you apart. It makes them feel better for 2.5 seconds. And then they feel crappy probably. 
some people are just negative and they probably thrive in that. But I'm going to believe the best and hope that it's 2.5 seconds that they find enjoyment of putting someone else down because they feel that it's lifting themselves up, which it is not. But have you ever seen the movie Cinderella? She comes out with a dress that was made for her by her little friends and her mom, part of her mom's dress and her mom's necklace and her stepsisters that have the finest, most expensive dresses in the entire town that have everything money can buy for them. See her and the way that she shines. Is she shining because she's the most beautiful? No. She's shining because her heart is so pure and so kind and so loving. And what do they do? They rip her dress apart. Why? So she can't go to the ball. Why? Because they're insecure that if she goes to the ball, being the awesome, wonderful person she is, she'll get more attention than them. It's insecurity. They are insecure. So they want to rip Cinderella's dress apart so she can't go to the ball. So she can't get that attention that she deserves because she's a kind, loving, wonderful person. So they think, well, if I just rip her apart, she can't go. Little do they know she's got friends in high places, okay, and she's going to go anyway. Do you know how many times I can tell you stories in my life where people have tried to rip me apart? They've tried to put me down. I got friends in high places. I have angels that surround me everywhere I go that move on my benefit. So when somebody thinks they're going to rip me apart or put me down or say something bad about me, my angels jump into action. Some of those angels are my friends that know me, that have spent time with me, that are like, you don't know her. You, you don't know anything about Ashley Dawn. And some of them are real angels that I truly believe God sends on my behalf to work things out for my good and his glory. So when people try to put you down or back you into a corner, right? Nobody puts baby in a corner. Nobody puts God's baby in a corner. I am God's baby. Do not try to put me in a corner because you'll end up in a corner yourself. And the story of Esther, Haman, wanted to destroy Esther and Mordecai and all the Jewish people. And so he built gallows and he weaseled his little way into the, to the king's presence. And he convinced the king to do something bad to the bad man in the village, right? What happened? This same gallow that Haman set up to hurt others, he was the one hanging on. Why? Because you reap what you sow. You want to see, you want to sow them seeds? Get ready because you're going to grow that tree. You better be careful what seeds you plant because a lot of the trees you plant, you wouldn't like it if they started growing in your life. And they will. I can't tell you how many times people have tried to hurt me. And it's not that they don't like me. It's that they wish they were me. Why do you think people copy you? Why do you think people pretend to be you? It's because they're insecure with themselves. They see you shining. They see that you have confidence. Ashley Dawn, where does your confidence come, come from? It comes from God. I know that I know that I know who I am in God. If you don't like me, that's okay. You didn't make me. I'm not for you to like. I'm for God. If my sunshine is too shiny for you, that's fine. Put some sunglasses on. That's not my problem. That's a you problem. I know who I am and I'm not going to be mean and I'm not going to be hateful. And here's the deal. If I see another woman that I think looks prettier than me on the outside, I will be the first one to tell her, you are beautiful. You have beautiful hair. You have a beautiful smile. You have a beautiful heart. If I'm around somebody and they are genuinely kind and loving, I will go out of my way to tell them, wow, you are a beautiful person. Like your heart is absolutely beautiful. I have no problem complimenting others. If somebody has a nicer outfit than me or more money than me, good for you, girl. You must work real hard. I do not have time in my life for hatred and negativity. Have you been hurt, Ashley Dawn? Yeah, a lot. But I'm not going to let that hurt sink into my heart. It's like a ship. The ship don't sink till the water gets inside. As long as you keep pailing that water out, that ship ain't going to sink. Well, negativity is the same way. You got to pail that junk out. When that negativity starts coming around, you pail it out. Get it out of there. Get it away from you. Don't play with negativity. Do not invite negativity to your house. 
If you know somebody that's negative, tell them move on, move around you. Do not, right? Friends of fools suffer harm. Bad company corrupts good character. Oh, but I'm trying to be a light. I'm trying to be nice. Get away from that negativity. Get away from it. You can be nice as pie and that negativity will poison your pie. Get away from it. Bless them. Encourage them. Get away from it. And just know, right in the Bible it says when Jesus wasn't welcomed, he dusted himself off and went to the next town where he was. Sometimes in your life, you're not going to be welcome at all places. That's okay. Some of those places you're not welcome to, there's a reason. And you should be thanking God that you went welcome there because in time, you'll see you didn't want to be there anyway. And there are tables that I've tried to sit at that I haven't had a seat at. And later down the road, God has revealed why. Thank you, God, that you look out for me when I'm not looking out for myself. So that's today's video. I hope it encouraged you. The people that are showing you hate in your life, that hate's not towards you. That hate's towards themselves. Pray for them. Let them go. And don't let that affect you or impact you. They got insecurity problems. They got confidence issues. They hate themselves. And what they need to do is work on that. Go to counseling. Get some healing. And stop being mean and hateful and angry and negative to everybody else. I hope this encouraged you. I love you. But more importantly, God loves you way more than I do. And he has a purpose and a plan for you. A big one. You are seen, you are celebrated, and you are oh so very loved. I'll catch you in the next one.